Our third presenter today is Dr. Ellen Johnston Lang of the University of Michigan, where she is an associate at the Center for Chinese Studies, University of Michigan at, at Ann Arbor. She completed her doctorate in Chinese art history at the University of Michigan in 1967, and she specializes in the history of Chinese painting and Chinese material culture. Uh, her numerous books include The Winking Owl, Art in the People's Republic of China, Photographs of Bygone Taiwan, Taiwan in the 1960s, Art and Aesthetics in Chinese Popular Prints, Selections from the Muban Foundation Collection, and Selling Happiness, Calendar Posters, and Visual Culture in Early 20th Century Shanghai. Her recent work, up in Flames, the Ephemeral Art of Pasted Paper Sculpture in Taiwan is co-authored with Helen Huiling Liu and is a comprehensive study of traditional Chinese paper sculpture, uh, documenting that form, that ancient craft as it exists today in Taiwan. Uh, her presentation for us today is the American Club, the Columbia Country Club, and the creation of an American ambiance in Shanghai, 1920. To 1943. So, I'm going to be talking about the American Club, the Columbia Country Club, Washington's Birthday Ball, and the creation of an American ambiance in Shanghai. The American Club and the Columbia Country Club were two of the most elegant and most important American organizations in Republican Shanghai. They provided their members with special surroundings catering to the recreation of an American lifestyle abroad. The distinctly American style of the architecture of the clubhouses themselves and the annual cycle of social activities therein proclaimed the strength of the American, presidents, the American presence in international Shanghai, especially in the face of long-standing British commitments there. The single most important annual event for Americans in Shanghai was not the 4th of July, but the celebration of Washington's birthday. Okay, Americans in Shanghai, just a brief introduction. World War I brought large members of Americans and their families to Shanghai. Their patriotic feelings were aroused as they began to be, as James Husky puts it, sensitive, quote, to slights from the Shanghai British, end quote. Among the institutions supported by Americans to establish their own community in Shanghai were such things as the community church, the Shanghai American School, the American Club, the Columbia Country Club, a YMCA for foreigners, and the, of course, the American consulate buildings. As James Husky has summarized, quote, the new Shanghai American community, which emerged, was a distinct entity, an ethnic community, whose members all spoke American, as the British Shanghailanders uh, scornfully put it, end quote. So in Shanghai during the 20s and 30s, there were innumerable clubs and associations for every conceivable social group or interest. By 1939, there were something like 200 such clubs just in Shanghai. The numerous social clubs in Shanghai, many of which were national in character, offered a sense of stability to members of the foreign community. A particular dimension of Shanghai expatriate life is encountered in the ways in which Americans in Shanghai constructed their own national community within the surrounding foreign enclave. Now, uh, 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 clubhouses in Shanghai often reflected national architectural styles. Here are some two examples. Uh, both of these are on the Bund. On the left-hand side is the British, the, the Shanghai Club, which was the British club, social club, uh, built in 1908 to 1911. On the right-hand side is the German Concordia Club, built 1904 to 1907, which has now been demolished. The British Shanghai Club makes a visual nationalistic statement through its British Renaissance elements, the symmetry, the massive columns across the facade, and the cupolas at the corner. The German Concordia Club is asymmetrical, allowing for unexpected details, such as towers of different shapes and different heights, one round, one square, 
and they scroll gables. These were all characteristics of what is called German Renaissance style. So these reflected uh, national architectural styles. Okay, let's look at the American Club. The American Club in Shanghai had its roots in something known as the Slam Club, S-L-A-M, Slam Club. This was organized in 1916 by a group of Americans who met in private residences to play bridge. On May 10th, 1917, a motion was made to change the name from the Slam Club to the American Club. By 1923, the American Club had almost 1,000 members, 90% of whom were American. And so they clearly needed larger quarters. It was no longer reasonable to go to private residences to play. The American architect, Roland Curry, uh, born 1884 and died in 1947, was designated and hired as the architect of the new clubhouse. The new clubhouse had to meet the general requirements of an American clubhouse from the, or in the United States, and yet at the same time had to be adaptable to the needs of the best clubs in China. So the um, American Club, if I can find it, was located in downtown Shanghai on Fuzhou Road. I can't see from this angle, but it would be very close in here, very close to the Bun, very close to the business center of Shanghai. And it is perhaps the most prestigious building of this architects, of Curry's uh, architectural designs in Shanghai. Here are two views of it. Completed in 1924, the American Club was formally opened on March 31st, 1925. Now, according to local accounts, accounts in the local newspapers, the building was, quote, based on the usual New York City and other clubhouses. So it's a distinctly American idea. It was in what's known as American Georgian colonial style with a facade of red tapestry bricks, imported, they said, from America, and trimmed with white Carrara marble. Detailed descriptions of plans state that the red bricks, quote, laid in white joint mortar with the white marble trimming will provide a simple yet distinctive and original effect in Shanghai architecture. So there was already a statement here, let's do something which visually uh, is different and unusual for Shanghai architecture. The American Club, like similar institutions in Western cities, offered the all-male membership, so this is for men only, the usual club amenities and indoor recreation facilities. According to descriptions, in the basement, there was a gymnasium, locker rooms, a Turkish bath with steam. There were hot rooms and massage rooms, barbershop, bowling alleys, and a pin pool room. The ground floor had an imposing entrance in Italian marble and bronze railings uh, fastened to the stairways. The bar and billiard rooms were on this floor also, complete with oak paneling and beamed ceilings. The first floor also contained the lounge and the library, which we see on the left, uh, and a card room, all having oak paneling, and the mahjong room. Now, the mahjong room was perhaps the only concession to being in Shanghai. Uh, the mahjong room was in Chinese style with an expert Chinese designer being brought to Shanghai from Beijing for this purpose, that is to design this uh, mahjong room. And you can see the sort of Chinese elements uh, in the furnishings, the lanterns, and uh, that sort of thing. On the second and third floors, second, third, and fourth floors, uh, there were 51 uh, bedrooms for guests or members of the club. And these were described in the local press as being, quote, cheerful, bright, and inviting. On the fifth floor, there was an assembly room, main and private dining rooms. So here are the views here. Uh, the dining room on the, uh, obviously on the right-hand side, and one of the guest rooms on the left-hand side. Now, despite the lavishness of the public rooms, 
The guest bedrooms, even though they were described as bright, beautiful, and inviting, were considered by others somewhat Spartan. An American journalist and correspondent for the New York Times, Hallett Edward Abend, was a member of the American Club. He was there in 1926, and he stayed there in August, August 1926. And right enough his stay, where he stayed at the American Club, he complained that the little bathroom was hot and airless, the room was bare-walled, and the bed was hard. As if to proclaim its Americanness, the American Club was noted for apple pie, served 24 hours a day. <laughs> All right. So the American Club would not only be, according to the reports, the largest and technically the most comfortable of all clubhouses in Shanghai, but also through the use of materials brought from America for both the actual construction and the interior furnishings, and you may have recognized some of the Windsor chairs used there, this would, quote, constitute an important advertising of American materials, building materials, as well as methods of construction. At the official opening of the American Club on March 31, 1925, the Council General, Edwin Cunningham, declared that the completion of the palatial club building was, quote, another milestone in the growth and permanency of our American community in Shanghai. So it was serving its purpose, one of its purposes there. Now, Shanghai has other examples of the massive English Renaissance style that I showed that characterized the British Shanghai Club with its uh, facade of huge columns and so on. And it also has other examples of the picturesque German Renaissance style that we saw in the Concordia Club. However, the American Georgian style in Shanghai seems to be uniquely expressed in the American Club. I don't know of another building in Shanghai, I may be wrong, but I don't know of another building in Shanghai that is constructed in American Georgian style. So let's turn to the country club, the Columbia Country Club. Obviously, Columbia refers to the United States. Prior to 1917, a few Americans of note in Shanghai were admitted as lowly members of clubs of other nations. And Americans felt the lack of a club of their own in the city where it was said, quote, amusements are scarce and where it is a particular solace to get among one's own after a day of contact with people and ideas from all over the world. So they were lamenting that they really didn't have a club of their own. In 1917, a small group of American residents in Shanghai formed the Columbia Country Club. It was 1917. By 1921, the membership in the Columbia Country Club had grown from a mere 90 people to 411. And the club's board of governors had decided to seek other quarters. They acquired property, approximately eight acres, at 301 Great Western Road, uh, that today is Yan'an West Road. And that puts it about a 20 minute ride from the business district of Shanghai and at the same time adjacent to the residences of most of Shanghai's American population. An American architect, Elliot Hazard, 1879 to 1943, who had been working in Shanghai since around 1920, was hired to design a new building. It was designed and constructed between 1923 and 1925. So it was located, this is, this is where the um, American Club would have been in downtown Shanghai. The American Country Club is, I can never find it, out here someplace. I don't know, can you see whether that's, okay, but it doesn't make any difference. It was clear, it's clear out in the suburbs. I, from this angle, I just, I really can't see anything. Now, in contrast to the city site of the long, all-male, long-time all-male uh, American club, the popular Columbia Country Club was located in the suburbs. Now, like country clubs in America, the Columbia Country Club combined social life 
and indoor and outdoor sports for not just the male members of the family, the entire family. So here's what it looks like. This is the south facade, the sort of garden facade. The country club is a unique American invention. It grew out of the need for a clubhouse for male golfers. The country club also provided welcome, secluded country escapes from the hustle and bustle of the city and slowly evolved into venues for a wider range of recreations, some athletic like tennis or swimming and some purely social like dances and holiday parties. And if you look very carefully, you can see the outlines of tennis courts uh, here in the foreground. It functioned as the antithesis of the male dominated city club. Country club memberships included both men and women. Now, throughout the development of country clubs in the United States, no single plan was ever accepted as being the plan for a clubhouse. It never became, there was never a standardized version. The decision about what sort of architectural style to follow for uh, a country clubhouse was sometimes just merely dictated by geographical location. If it was in the south, it may look like a southern plantation, that sort of thing. In Shanghai, the decision to use the Spanish mission style for the Columbia Country Club was because it was said to have been, quote, admirably adapted to the climate, local materials, and quality of workmanship available, that it lends itself charmingly with its formal informality to obtaining most artistic effects. Construction on the Columbia uh, Country Club started in 1923. So here's the south uh, entranceway and the central entranceway where you can see a special touch here. The basic elements, I feel rather foolish telling you people here in California about this. <laughs> the basic, but people in Michigan may not know this. The basic elements of the Spanish mission style popular in California intended for the Columbia Country Club are easily seen in uh, a recent photograph of the south facade. The building is composed of simple, almost austere block-like forms. Its plain walls are broken by narrow arched windows. Now, originally, there were to have been two espandana. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is a major characteristic of Spanish mission architecture. On, as we see on the right-hand side, the espandana is a raised gable end with scalloped curved contour, originally a belfry construction with only one wall and used in churches to provide added height and impressiveness to the structure. Uh, in the uh, Columbia Country Club, eventually only one small esmondata was retained as an ornate and elegant visual accentuation of the central entrance to the club. And here you have examples of this form from uh, California places. The club boasted an interior, a loja, which could be enclosed in glass and heated for use in winter, and an open terrace, a bar, a grill, you can see all these things on, on the ground plan, and a grand ballroom with space for tables on three sides. It was perhaps best known for its swimming pool, which we see here, and which we will see that's over here on this side. This was a large open air swimming pool, 42 feet wide and 100 feet long, surrounded by a Spanish pergola, which it was said will make an excellent setting with a lounging space provided at the north end from which spectators could witness aquatic sports, end quote. Thanks to refrigeration, the pool could be converted into a skating rink in the winter time. Now, over the years, here's the pool as it was constructed on, on the left-hand side, and then under the uh, Chinese uh, current government, they made that addition at the top, which sort of closes in on it and makes it uh, less attractive. 
Over the years, the Columbia Country Club, like its counterparts in America, hosted a full range of entertainment and diversions for its members, Easter parties, egg hunts, Fourth of July dances, lawn suppers, fireworks, bridge and mahjong tournaments, children's Halloween and Christmas parties, so on and so forth. The single most, uh, this is the uh, picture of the country club today, the single most momentous annual event sponsored by the American community in general was the celebration of Washington's birthday. In 1922, it was discovered and it was lamented that they really didn't have a good picture of George Washington. And so they hired a man by the name of Stanley Arthurs to make an oil painting of Washington, which he did. And the uh, Washington's Birthday Ball of 1926 was by far the most lavish because it was the occasion for the unveiling of this huge portrait of the first president. Now, I looked all over. I could find only these really dreadfully murky um, reproductions of this painting where the descriptions say he's standing alone, Washington full uniform as the commander in chief uh, of the colonial army surveying the country in the vicinity of Valley Forge. Someone in the distance is holding his white horse. And this goes on and on and on with this very lavish description of an extraordinary painting. There, uh, when it was unveiled, the portrait was railed off in a little shrine of its own. It was veiled with American flags, illuminated with electric lighting arrangement, which showed it to its best advantage. The part that I like best is that in the ballroom, above the orchestra platform, was an American eagle outlined in red and white lights, and one eye blinked off and on, <laughs> as though eyeing the scene. It was understood that although the uh, portrait of Washington would have a permanent home at the American Club, it could be, uh, where, where there was a, a special place allotted to it, it could be transferred to locations uh, wherever it might be needed for other celebrations. So what happened uh, to the American Country Club, uh, the, the American Club and the Columbia Country Club? On December 8th, 1941, immediately after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Japanese forced the Americans out of the, American, out of the American club and moved in. The building became the headquarters of the Japanese Navy. As for the American Country Club, it became the location of what's known as a civil service, civil assembly center. That's a euphemism for a concentration camp where people from Shanghai and elsewhere were housed until they could find another place for them. It was rather a dismal situation. Rats were a common uh, problem. Thus, under the Japanese occupation, occupation of Shanghai, the once proud American Club and the Columbia Country Club, two highly visible symbols of American social and political presence in Shanghai, were debased and humbled. Today, the American Club and the Columbia Country Club have been appropriated by the government of the People's Republic of China. The former, that is the American Club, is now owned by the Shanghai High People's Court. The latter houses a pharmaceutical company. Despite these new functions, the architectural presence in Shanghai of these two clubs remains undiminished. As such, they are monuments testifying to the success of the 1920s project to establish an American ambiance in China socially and architecturally. The Columbia Country Club proclaimed a specific American social innovation, the family-oriented social club. The different regional architectural styles of the two clubs were transformed, or transplanted from opposite sides of the American continent. The formal opulence of the urban American club is redolent of New York City's men's clubs. The casualness of the rural Columbia Country Club originated in the starkly elegant mission style of the American Southwest. So one from the East Coast, one from the West Coast. And annually, the grand Washington's birthday pageant often played out in one or another of these two quintessentially American environments was a further manifestation of American solidarity in Shanghai. Shanghai, China's cosmopolitan center. Thank you. <laughs>